welcome to Global Matters with Solange Warner. The purpose of our show is to promote international trade, cultural and humanitarian exchange worldwide. In today's show, we will have the Consul of the Kingdom of Denmark, Christopher Smith, Juanita Bates, the CEO and President of Anushka Healthcare Group, and Flamingo Royale, a band from Georgia College State University supporting human trafficking awareness. Stay with us and we will be right back. I am honored to introduce you to the Consul of Denmark, Christopher Smith. Consul, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Last year, Georgia exported over $28 billion, the most ever exported in one year for our state. Please tell us how Georgia has accomplished this success and why this means more jobs for our state. Well, I think like any championship season, it's about teamwork. And the Georgia Department of Economic Development does a fantastic job of Kathy Falls and her crew over there promoting Georgia as do Georgia's offices all over the globe. Also, it has to do with our connectivity to the world with Atlanta growing at exponential rates internationally, uh, Delta with these direct flights all over. It's an easy place to do business. Plus awareness. Companies now are putting global as part of their business plan. That's right. Um, tell us, I, I know that um, Canada, China, and Mexico are the top destinations for exporting for our state. Mm -hmm. please, please tell us about the new trends in exporting. For instance, industries and countries that they are taking um, uh, a special place for Georgia uh, uh, since last year. Well, the wonderful thing about Georgia's export markets is they seem to be really balanced. When you look at Asia, Europe, and North America, that's about 75% of Georgia's export markets. Then there are very uh, other important ones, such as the Caribbean, Africa and many others that are coming up there and Georgia hasn't maximized their footprint yet there's still a lot of room to grow now some of the trends you're talking about are green tech I'll give you an example MAGA Solar which is a German owned company has a solar cell factory in Dublin Georgia I've just brought on 300 jobs many many clean tech options there from all over the world are coming to Georgia automotive if you look over at West Point we've got the Kia plant from Korea and then close, close to home, but not quite in Georgia, is Volkswagen coming up the road in Chattanooga, and that'll benefit our state as well. That's excellent. Um, I know as the Consul of Denmark, of course, uh, you're very interested in the Baltic uh, countries. Tell us a little bit more about that area and why is that meaningful for exporting uh, for our state? Well, when you look at the countries, when I talk about Baltics, I'm talking about countries that have ports on the Baltic, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Poland, and of course Russia over there by St. Petersburg and then you got Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia in the mix as well uh, and I found it very interesting that in all of those countries except for Germany Georgia ranks uh, seventh or higher in among the US states and exports. We're number two to Poland, uh, we're number seven to Denmark, uh, we think we're fourth uh, when we look at the Lithuania and Latvia somewhere and so I like to bring that up because, yes, I do represent Denmark, which is the gateway to the Baltics. And Denmark is a huge shipping nation. Uh, Maersk Port, uh, Maersk Shipping, excuse me, is the number one customer of the Georgia Ports Authority. And Danish shipping firms uh, roughly have about 10% of the world market. And they have a particular uh, area of expertise there. So that's an area, when you look at Russia, 183 million in exports to Russia last year, that's just the tip of the iceberg which that can be accomplished so there's a lot of room to grow there absolutely uh, well in in being that said please tell us about um, the Council of Denmark in the international uh, trade office that you'll have here in Atlanta which I know uh, you do excellent job with bringing companies from Denmark well yes the Trade Council of Denmark with the Danish Trade Commissioner here in Atlanta is an engine for growth. They actually have an accelerator there and Mr. Jan Sauer and his staff are bringing interesting companies in here all the time. They tend to be very good companies that have high paying jobs for Americans. Uh, many of them are software companies, many of them are green tech companies, 
it really runs the gamut because Denmark has such a diversified uh, economy. But what this program allows them to do, it allows them to get into the market quickly and it allows them to take an office in the Danish Trade Council's office right here in Buckhead in Atlanta. They can run out there and start uh, getting into the market and there's a Danish American Chamber of Commerce and community there that helps them get going. So it's been a huge success story. Well, uh, you know, I think it will be very important uh, to tell our viewers how business here locally can become part of the networking that the uh, Danish uh, consulate and also the International Trade Office um, has. I know that there are uh, law firms and perhaps marketing companies and, and mm -hmm. others such as accounting that they could become good source of information and perhaps uh, uh, clients uh, mm -hmm. for, for the Danish companies and vice versa. So how these local companies can become involved with the Danish consulate and the Danish companies? Sure. Well, there are many ways they can do that. One, travel to Denmark, and I'll have to give a plug for my friends at Delta because there is a direct flight from June to August, a lovely time of year to go to Copenhagen and to Jutland and to Udense and to other parts of Denmark. You can take a cruise over there as well. Uh, but uh, we have kind of two arms. We have uh, the Danish Trade Council here, and then we have Invest Denmark, which is based out of New York for American companies wishing to do direct investment there. But the Danish American Chamber of Commerce is a way people can get involved. Uh, they're on the web. They're very active. Uh, and I would say taking it even broader than Denmark, uh, the World Chamber of Commerce and all the bilaterals here, there are so many resources where people can you know, kind of get their feet wet and find out what's going on internationally so they can get off the bench and get in the game, so to speak. Yeah, that is true. I see many companies that they come to the World Chamber of Commerce and they are looking specifically for leads, possible clients from international uh, markets to see how they can offer their services. And that's why it's so important for us uh, as the international business community to create this link between mm -hmm. these international companies looking to uh, perhaps open a branch here in Georgia or other states mm -hmm. in the South and, and also uh, offer the services for, for these companies that they are excellent and that they can provide excellent service for the international companies. Yeah, I agree with you and I think basically what I tell anyone interested in international business is thankfully, you know, we've got the internet, we've got all this wonderful telecommunications technology today, but there's never any replacement for personal relationships knowing people one-on-one. -on -one. And so that's something that has to be built. And the wonderful thing about an international situation is when people are coming here to Atlanta from Denmark or Chile or whatever, uh, they're open and they're, they want to meet new people. And it makes things easy. And uh, invest a little time, uh, do a little homework, and, and, and you know do a little hard work, and things will pay off for people. Thank you so much for that information. When we get back, I will ask the Consul of Denmark more information about the consulate and about uh, his professional um, expertise as an attorney with uh, clients um, in, in international markets and also here locally. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.
Council of Denmark. Besides being the Council of Denmark and an advocate of international trade, you are a prominent attorney with international and local clients. Please tell us more about your expertise and, and then I will ask you how that interacts with the consular's uh, role as well. Happy to do so. Well, as you know, we have 67 countries with consuls here in, in Georgia. Now, about oh, close to 30 of them are career consuls. The rest of us have our day job, as we say, and, and many of us are from different professions, and I'm a full-time practicing attorney and have been for close to 20 years here in Georgia. And I'm very fortunate because my practice is very diverse. We do anything from representing 18-wheeler uh, injury victims of people who've been in bad car wrecks uh, to representing multinational companies of either anywhere from the defense contracting area uh, to Danish fashion to, you know, different companies. So really, I sometimes tell people that I represent everyone from a prince to a pauper, and I guess it's I represent uh, a kingdom that's true. So I have a, a very interesting practice. A lot of it is business-oriented. Several of my clients are, of course, organically grown here, you know, American companies. Uh, many of them are from, from abroad. And that is what's nice with technology today. Uh, before I left here, I was shooting over a contract to Europe. And uh, when I get back, I'll be working on a, a local matter. So uh, we're very diverse in that respect. And as I have my own law firm, uh, I'm able to pick and choose and kind of uh, pick the clients that I like. That's wonderful. How is an attorney based here locally can go about and get clients overseas? Uh, again, it's kind of back to that work ethic. You have to put in the time, the effort, the money, and, and build the relationships. And you can't expect necessarily to walk into a room one day and, and sign up 10 clients. It normally doesn't happen that way. Uh, I'm meeting with a client uh, this afternoon that was re referred to me by an existing client. And that's how we get much of our businesses through referrals of existing clients, which you know, we're very appreciative of. And so it takes a lot of time uh, and a lot of effort, but it pays off in the end. Absolutely. But you're based uh, here in Georgia. In other words, you couldn't uh, do a case in, in Denmark, for instance, or you're able to do that as well? No, actually I couldn't because uh, in, in Denmark, just like the U.S., you would have to be licensed there. Absolutely. Now, if I needed something done in Denmark, I have a lot of attorneys that I, I know over there and on LinkedIn with some of That's them. That's the secret. Because <laughs> I've met them over there and we work together on things. Uh, but uh, each state has a specific licensing requirement. Now, some immigration attorneys don't have a state licensing requirement but uh, because it's a federal matter. But most attorneys uh, have a state licensing requirement. But you build bridges and you have allies all over the place. And I was talking to a friend in Indianapolis the other day uh, on a case assisting us up there, one in Florida last week. So there are ways to get things done. Uh, with get by with a little help with your friends, as they say. Well, excellent. And I know that you probably promote uh, Georgia as much as you promote uh, Denmark here, and, yes. and you are the best representation of the uh, government of Denmark here in our state. Thank you. I know that. Um, so, uh, but you do an excellent job representing Georgia as well, and, and that's the, the reason why I'm asking you about uh, international trade with Georgia. Uh, please tell us how your profession interacts with the consular uh, uh, job and, and the role you have there. Sure. Well, I think it's a natural because uh, a consul's duties, there are many, but one of them, for example, is issuing passports. That's something that we do for Danish citizens here. Or if a Danish citizen is in need of uh, traveling abroad here, uh, you, you know, you have a situation that comes up. Lawyers are problem solvers. That's what we do. So it's not alien for us to say, hey, somebody's in a tight, somebody's in an emergency situation. Uh, you need to come in there like the cavalry and, and try to get something done for them. And I think being an attorney is a very uh, good thing for that because, you know, Georgia's a big place. We're the largest state east of the Mississippi. And I went to the University of Georgia undergraduate, and I went to Mercer Law School, so I've got friends in all parts of the state. That's why oftentimes uh, people wonder why an American is representing another country. And the reason is uh, Denmark and all the other countries, they like to have people that are from the area that know who to call in Columbus if they have a problem or Savannah or Dalton or Dahlonega or wherever it may be. Right. So that, that, that it kind of goes, meshes in with what we do for a living anyway, because we're problem solvers. Right, it makes sense. Um, I, I know you have received many honors and recognitions 
please tell us why a uh, prestigious book recently published in Holland uh, recognize you among uh, prime ministers, diplomats, and ambassadors from different countries? Well, it's back to relationships. I knew the right guy. But uh, fortunately, this book that's been published, it's uh, Consular Affairs and Diplomacy. Uh, Brill, B-R-I-L-L, -L, is the publishing company. It can be bought online, and it's going to be used mainly in uh, graduate schools, schools of diplomacy. I would like to ask you, what would it be your advice to young generations in how to get involved with this fascinating world of diplomacy and why it's so important for our countries to really have diplomats such as you representing foreign governments and in each uh, state really. Uh, why it's so important not only for the relationships, political relationships, but also for the economy. The first thing I would advise a young person is to delve into the educational opportunities that they have. You know, know the countries of the globe, read up on it. Uh, the internet is a fantastic resource for that. Virtually every embassy now, if you go to the Danish webpage or, or one of the other webpages, is going to have just bukus of information available that they can sit at their home and absorb that opportunities that my generation never had. Yeah. Uh, that's something they can do. They can get involved with the international cultural events here in Atlanta and other parts and learn about that. And then when they're going to college, they might want to consider a career at the State Department. That's extraordinary. I think that is an inspiration. I believe that you and many of the other 67 consuls here in Georgia are an inspiration for our community and for our younger generations. I would like to thank you so much for being on the show today. And I would like to have an open invitation for you to come back and give us great information as you provide today. Thank you so much, Consul. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. And now I would like to introduce you to Flamingo Royale, a band supporting human trafficking awareness to keep our children safe. Hello, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, please introduce your band and start by you. Okay, thank you very much. Well, we are Flamingo Royale, and I am Harry Mitchell. I play the guitar, and over here we have Greg Callis on the drums, Mr. Carlos Enamorado on the bass, Aaron Cole on the trumpet, sometimes plays keyboard as well, and then we have TJ Brown on the saxophone. Please tell us a, a, a contact information with people that listen to your band can contact you too. Well, if you'd like to book us, we do um, anything from private parties to um, playing at a bar, um, and we can be reached at flamingoroyale at gmail.com. Or you can visit us on MySpace or Facebook or Reverb Nation. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.
back with my guest, Juanita Bates. Juanita, welcome to the show. Thank you. Juanita is the president and CEO of Anushka Healthcare Group. Please tell us about your business and your goals of changing healthcare locally and internationally. Well, first of all, um, my goal uh, to change healthcare started at least um, within 15 years ago. But as of today, we are in a major epidemic. And that epidemic is seniors, of course, or the adult or the elderly, the new elderly adult. We are in a major epidemic of retirement and we are, are going to have to change the whole meaning of retirement because retirement is no longer not working. And in order to work, which is where I get to my business, you must stay physically fit, healthy, and able to be independently self-sufficient. And so I started the change knowing that the change was coming when I started my first rehabilitation hospital. That sounds really interesting because you are trying to make these changes not only locally, uh, but also internationally. How do you plan to bring this uh, concept to other countries? Have you already been able to approach other healthcare um, organizations around the world? Yes. And to answer that, um, and in my statement, um, as I stated, it is a worldwide epidemic. This epidemic of baby boomers and seniors is not local, it's not territory, it's not just in Atlanta, it's worldwide. With, so therefore internationally, we have to be prepared to take care of the elderly, the seniors, of however we would like to call them, uh, we have to be able to be prepared. And being, we should have been prepared 10 years ago, but we're not. So internationally, uh, what I decided to do was reach out in places like Dubai, certain other areas where people like to vacation. But uh, as a mother and not a senior yet, the first thing I look for is, of course, five-star hotels and healthcare. And what is happening in, even on the airplanes you are finding that people are getting sick or having some, you know, catastrophic injury or problem, and there's no one there to assess you. And what happens is only by chance the flight attendant or the captain would say, is there a doctor? And that doctor is not there on purpose. That doctor is there because he happened to be traveling somewhere. So it's a miracle that you may get a doctor. But what if there's not a doctor or a nurse on board? So you find yourself internationally landing somewhere and you still don't have access to healthcare. Right, and how do your company plans to um, solve this problem? Do you, have you reached out to uh, doctors and hospitals that they are willing to support the kind of work and initiatives that you're promoting? Well, yes, I have. What I decided to do was create and design a model that fits into the, the resort hotels. So I have reached out to hotel owners. And um, what is happening is I'm finding that they they're like the concept. They realize that majority of clients now are seniors and they need to be prepared. So I'm reaching out with my new design on the Anusha Healthcare Management to go in and change the face of the hotels. Of course, we're gonna keep the spas. And of course, we're gonna keep the nice suites but why can't we have that same hospitality, which is where you get the word hospital pretty much out of, and have some floors to help us with our seniors, okay? Let housekeeping be certified people who can perform CPR. Let some of the attendants and the caregivers be nurses on staff that, is a, that are able to help people. So whereas we are landing in these nice international locations and we are sitting and sleeping in these hotels but we also have an additional location a specialty care facility is what I would like to bring to all the hotel resorts so we're able to take care of everybody. Are there any uh, hotel chains that they already have uh, supported your initiative uh, here locally uh, or internationally? Well yes but I, I don't want to speak ahead of time right. but um, I would say Crown Plaza uh, in Marietta, 
uh, look forward to a great, you know, one of my designs upcoming project real soon to revamp that and change from the second to the third floor to one of the first specialty care and wellness facility in a hotel. Well, it sounds like a fascinating idea. I know I have visited uh, some centers. Uh, I believe Mary Hotel have them in uh, Fort Lauderdale where actually they are dedicated to elderly people. Exactly. So, and, and they are five-star facilities. They are really a solution for the elderly here in this country. And maybe yes. this is a concept that could be taken um, all over the world. Yeah, it have to be because the epidemic is all over the world. Yeah. So I can't just start in the United States or in Atlanta or even in Louisiana and say I'm here for the seniors but I'm not here globally. Right, exactly. No, yeah. it's, it's a very interesting concept and I know your organization also support uh, the uh, World Chamber of Commerce Human Trafficking Awareness Campaign uh, being part of uh, the humanitarian aspect of your organization Please tell us uh, why is your organization supporting uh, this campaign? Well, this campaign to, campaign to me really, really taps into another vision that Anushka have, and it's a mentoring aspect. To a lot of the young ladies that are subject to human trafficking or even just being in the environment of where people are soliciting them, whether it's via internet or, you know, actually um, you know, on the street, it's, it's just lack of that security and the esteem. So uh, if we find ourselves reaching out to young ladies who are subject to being vulnerable to, you know, getting caught in the human trafficking, not that it's, it's their fault or that it's on purpose, but maybe we can minimize the, I guess, the, uh, the total people that they have where they could actually take and you know make them something to do human trafficking. Exactly. Let's get them busy and get them something else to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Well, I wanted to thank you so much, oh, uh, first you. of all, for being on the show and also for supporting yes. uh, the World Chamber of Commerce uh, humanitarian campaign, Human Trafficking Awareness to Keep Our Children Safe. I thank you so much for being thank on the you. show. And uh, we will have information, uh, you may see information on her company and her webpage if you would like to find out more about uh, the project of Anushka Healthcare um, Group and the very interesting project uh, that she would like to take overseas. Thank you so much again. Thank okay? you for having me. Okay. Yes. Thanks. There is an average of 400 children victims of human trafficking being sold and bought in the streets of Atlanta every month. Please take action to stop this atrocity in our society. As Gandhi said, be the change you wish in the world. Thank you for joining us today.